Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our session on child passenger safety for newborns. My name is Aubrey Click. I'm from the Delaware Office of Highway Safety. I'm the fitting station coordinator for Kent and Sussex counties. Why do we use car seats? Motor vehicle collisions are still a top leading cause of death in children ages 1 through 13. I'd like to start off this presentation with two questions that I'd like you to think of your answer, and you're going to find out the real answer on the next slide. So for the first question, according to a study from the American Academy of Pediatrics, what percentage of newborns do you think go home correctly buckled in their car seat? So this is just talking about the child in their seat not the actual installation of the seat in the vehicle, so just the child buckled into their seat. And the second question is, how many car seats do you think are misused in Delaware? This is a number out of five. So how many out of five do you think are being misused? So the answer to our first question is that the study conducted by the American Academy of Pediatrics in 2014 showed that only 6% of newborns went home correctly buckled. So only six out of every 100 babies were going home correctly buckled in their car seats. To answer our second question, four out of five car seats in Delaware are misused. I often get asked, what's the best car seat? And a lot of people are surprised when I have to ask a lot of follow-up questions to be able to answer that one question. And that's because the best car seat is one that fits your child, fits your vehicle, and that you will use correctly 100% of the time. For your newborn, there are two different types of car seats that you could bring them home in. The first type is an infant carrier, which is shown in the photo on the left. These are also called rear-facing only car seats. You could also bring baby home in a rear-facing convertible. That type of seat is shown in the photo on the right-hand side. Both of these types of car seats are acceptable to bring baby home from the hospital. I always like to show this photo of a two-day-old child in a convertible car seat. That seat is the exact same model as you saw on the last slide, just in a different pattern. But I like to show it because those convertible car seats look so big next to a newborn, but they do actually fit. So as I said, both of those types of car seats are going to start off rear facing. And I get asked a lot, how long should I be rear facing my child in the car? Well, the current recommendations are to rear face as long as physically possible, which means to the upper height or weight limit of your convertible car seat. So even if you start out with that infant carrier, your next stage car seat is going to be a convertible car seat, which can rear face and then forward face later on. Most convertible car seats on the market have a rear-facing weight limit of 40 pounds, which is about your average four-year-old. Rear-facing seats keep a child's head, neck, and spine in a straight line in the event of a collision. This reduces the risk of spinal injuries. In this photo, you'll see a crash test that was done. On the left, you have a rear-facing child, and on the right-hand side, you have a forward-facing child. As you can see, in the top left-hand corner, there's a timestamp, and both of these photos were taken at the exact same moment of the crash. The rear-facing child's head, neck, and spine remained in a straight line during the collision. The forward-facing child's head, neck, and spine did not remain in a straight line.
I often get asked, okay, so where do their legs go? And truly their legs go anywhere they want, okay? They can cross their legs, they can put their legs up on the vehicle seat, they can toss them over the side of the car seat if they want. Anywhere that your child is comfortable, they can put their legs. As adults, we look at their legs bent and say, oh my goodness, that must not be comfortable. But they really are. Kids have much better flexibility than we do, and they really are comfortable that way. I also get asked, well, okay, if their legs can go anywhere they want, won't they break if we're in a collision? And actually, it's really rare to see lower limb injuries in rear-facing children. As an example, I have my own daughter pictured here. At five years and 10 months old, she was still rear-facing in her car seat. She still fit the rear-facing height and weight limit for the seat. And as you can see, her legs are bent here, but she is perfectly comfortable. So moving on to what should the harness look like when baby is put into the seat? And I will have photos of all of these points in the next few slides. The strap should be at or below the shoulders. They should be tight enough to pass the pinch test. The chest clip should rest at armpit level. And you should not be adding any bulky clothing or accessories that did not come in the box with your car seat. I know that the colder weather is coming up, but you never want to put baby in a car seat with a thick winter jacket or a snowsuit or anything like that. Here in this photo on the top row, they're showing you proper chest clip level. Okay, the one on the far right is the correct level, so resting right at the armpits. In the center photo, they're showing the pinch test, but I have a much better photo of this on the next slide. And at the bottom on the left-hand side is our rear-facing kiddo, and you can see that his straps are coming from just at or right below his shoulders. Here is that pinch test that I was talking about. On the left-hand side, you can see that that caregiver isn't able to pinch any of that strap up at the child's shoulder. If you tried to run your fingers across and pinch at the shoulder and you were able to grab some of the strap, like is pictured on the right-hand side, you would need to tighten that harness up a little bit more. As soon as you are able to not pinch any extra up at the shoulders, you can stop tightening. Here are some examples of those added accessories that you don't want to put in your car seat. Okay, anything that comes in the box with your car seat has been tested and approved by your car seat manufacturer. Any extra accessories that are bought anywhere besides your specific car seat manufacturer with their permission to use it would not be safe to use in your car seat. So any extra harness covers here, head huggers, any fabrics to layer onto your car seat, so custom fabrics on there. Now I often get asked, what's the difference between this cozy cover on the left and this cozy cover here on the right? And the difference is that, as you can see, on the back of the seat, that thick, fuzzy material is going behind the child, which means it would end up going underneath that harness system, okay? This one over here simply just goes over the top of the car seat. Nothing goes underneath of the child in that, with that particular cover. And then this one here doesn't interfere with the harness at all. Please note that while these are okay on the outside of your car seat, once you are in the vehicle, you should be taking them off. Now that we've talked about proper harnessing, we can talk about proper installation of the car seat. One of the most important things to do is to read the car seat manual. I know that they are very long and very thorough, but they contain 
the best information on how to get your car seat properly installed into your vehicle. Some tips that I have is that you want to use the lower anchors or the seat belt, never both. So your car seat will have lower anchors built onto it somewhere. If you've got an infant carrier, those lower anchors should be on your base, the car seat base, or if you have a convertible, they should be attached to your car seat. But you only want to use one or the other, never both at the same time. There should be less than one inch of movement at the belt path. So when you're checking for this movement of your car seat, when you have it installed, you only want to check with the force of a firm handshake. If you go in the back seat and you really try to shove that car seat across the car, I promise you it will move, okay? So only with the force of a firm handshake at the belt path. You also wanna make sure that your recline level is correct. There will be an indicator of some sort on your car seat to tell you what the proper recline level is. You wanna make sure that it's correct because this allows baby's airways to remain open. Newborns don't have any head or neck control, so you need to make sure that the recline level is correct so that their, their airways stay open when they're in the vehicle. If you need help with this, you can make a virtual appointment at one of our fitting stations. I also like to cover a little bit of safety outside of the car, especially if you have an infant carrier because you can take that car seat in and out of the car, take it everywhere with you. You can go in your stroller, you can carry it. Um, so that's why I like to point out some safety with that outside of the vehicle. First, your car seat is not a safe place for baby to sleep outside of the car. So when it's in the car, you worked really hard when you were installing your car seat to make sure that it was sitting at the appropriate recline level. Once you take that carrier out of the vehicle, it can sit at whatever recline you put it at. Okay, so say it accidentally gets propped up on something, it could be sitting at a dangerous recline. So for a child that has no head or neck control, you have to be very, very careful at what angle it's at when you're outside of the car. If baby is still sleeping once you exit your vehicle, it is recommended to take them out of their car seat and move them to a safe sleep surface. My next tip is do not place your car seat on top of a shopping cart. So your car seat should not be sitting on that portion of a shopping cart where a toddler is meant to sit. This makes your cart top heavy and put you at risk for a tip over. You should always harness baby as if they're going into the car. Accidents happen, okay? Um, if the carrier were to slip or fall, or if somebody bumped into your stroller that your carrier is sitting on, if baby is harnessed in appropriately, then that is less chance that they would have to fall out and hit their head on a hard surface if that were to happen, but also small babies wiggle. So they could entrap themselves in the straps if they're too loose. And last but not least, look before you lock your car and lock your car before you leave. So please check your back seat every single time that you are getting out of your vehicle. We all think that this is something that could never happen to us, but a hot car death can happen to anyone, anywhere. So create the habit of checking your back seat before you leave your vehicle and then lock your car before you leave. This also helps to protect other children that may not be in your family, okay? So if you're locking your car before you leave, children can't crawl in and accidentally trap themselves inside. Here's the contact information for our fitting stations. Appointments are free, always. We are currently offering virtual appointments. We can meet you over any video service that you prefer, be it FaceTime, Google Duo, Zoom, really anything you need. 
in-person appointments will be able to resume once phase, phase three is active. So for Kenton Sussex counties, like I said, that's me, Aubrey Click. My phone numbers are listed there. And you could also contact me by email. If you live in Newcastle County, Sean Rowe is our fitting station coordinator for up there. And there are her phone numbers and her email address. Please reach out if you have any questions. Or if you have any questions about this presentation, please feel free to either call or email me. Thank you so much for attending today.